making a play. Making a play. Making a play. Making a play. What's up, y'all? Thank you so much for tuning back into Scorpio TV. This time we have Lighthouse Horror, who we haven't had on the channel in a while. Last night, I saw something terrifying outside my apartment window, creepy pasta story time, and it was uploaded on December 4th, 2021. And like I said, we haven't had Lighthouse Horror on the channel in a hot minute. He's another creepy pasta guy. And honestly, it's been so long since we've had him on the channel, I kind of like forgot. I didn't forget about him because I always get his notifications, but uh, I don't know. I just never uh, checked it out, but I'm subscribed to this man and I have his bell icon um, turned on. So anytime he drops new content, I get a notification from YouTube. So I'm pretty sure this man is like got some fucking talent. I'm pretty sure whatever story or creepypasta or creepypastas I've reacted to and watched from him, this, this shit scared me or like it creeped me the hell out. Cause obviously if I'm subscribed to him and got the bell icons tapped, that says a lot. I only do that to people that really like get me there, like scare and you know, creeped out wise. So definitely wanted to check this out. Cause it's a, you know, I saw something terrifying outside my apartment window. I have an apartment and the window is literally right behind where I'm sitting right now. So I don't know. I felt like maybe I could relate, even though I hope I never see nothing terrifying outside my window. But I digress. Uh, Y'all already know all the important links will be down in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. I live on the third floor of a block of flats. Pretty standard arrangement. Bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, dining, living, everything else room. You know, that sort of thing. It's furnished, and the whole place feels a little bit like an upmarket hotel. It's the nicest place I've ever lived, but yeah, I think I'm done here. The road I'm on is made up of residential buildings rather than houses on either side of the road. It forms a kind of corridor of noise. If you've got the windows open, you can hear conversations taking place at street level, as if you were standing right next to the speaker. This is somewhat less than optimal at night, but I'm a pretty heavy sleeper. Sorry, I was. The seagulls are worse. They scream. I don't know if you've ever lived near enough the ocean to know, but at night, seagulls scream. It can vary. Some nights they sound like someone discovering a headless baby. Sometimes they sound what? like lost souls falling to hell. What? But they always, always sound so very human. I can't stand them anymore. There's floor-to-ceiling windows in both the bedroom and the living room. Effectively, the entire south-facing wall is made of glass. There's even a small balcony, but there's not much of a view. There's another block of flats directly across from me. If I were one floor up, I'd be able to see clear over the top of them. But as is, looking out, it's nothing but red brick and the bits of other people's flats you can see into. A bit rear window, really. There's a staircase going up the middle of those flats, with glass running its entire length. It's about 20 feet away from our balcony, so you've got a pretty good view of people coming and going, if that's your thing. It's not mine, normally. Something happened in those flats the other night. It was four in the morning when I was woken up by a couple who were returning from an evening out. The younger gentleman's conduct at whatever club they had patronized that evening had apparently been less than exemplary, and the young woman was voicing her displeasure at some volume. To put it bluntly, she was screaming her head off. I'd been drinking, at home and alone, not that it's any of your business, the night before, and was starting with an absolute belter of a hangover. The man of the pair was now defending himself at a similar volume against these accusations as they moved on down the street. I wondered if there was anything around I could throw at them. My throat felt like I'd swallowed a pint of sand and tasted like something was dying in there. I reached out to my bedside table Damn. to find my water glass empty. Brilliant. I swung my feet out of bed, and my head took a sickening lurch off to one side. I stood up 
and shambled my way into the kitchen. I'd left the blinds open on the living room window. It was a light night. Excuse it me? barely ever gets dark in summer. What? I downed a glass of water, felt sick, and poured myself another to take in more slowly. I wandered over to the window. No. I was bollock naked, which was a bad sign. Yeah. I only went to bed like that when I got really trashed. But screw it. If people wanted to look through my window, that was their problem. I stood there for a little while, looking down at the street. I was lonely, to be honest, and wishing I'd been out. You might know the feeling. All my friends are pretty settled. Their Saturday nights revolve around a glass of wine and a new pasta recipe. And no one seems to want to go out and get wrecked like we did in the good old days. I could go out alone, but what would be the point? It's not a pleasant feeling, knowing that everyone else is doing a better job of growing up than you. I'd had just about enough of feeling sorry for myself and was about to head back to bed when I noticed a girl walking down the street below. She was tall, she looked my height at least, and I clear six foot barefoot. I liked her dress. I mean, you could write what I know about fashion on the back of a postcard and still have room for the first scene of Hamlet, but it was short and it was low cut, and thereby ticked every box as far as I was concerned. I watched her for a while. She stopped at the door of the flats opposite. She'd be climbing the stairs any moment, and that would mean she'd be looking directly at me for half her trip. I closed the blinds. I wasn't quite so devil-may-care about nudity when it came to a hot girl, it seemed. Right. The lights flashed on in the stairwell, and she started walking up. The way the staircase is positioned, you see people walking up half of one flight and half of the next, first towards, then away from you, over the course of four floors. They're out of sight for the other half of the time. I watched her climb the stairs. I decided she was the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen. I had a vague idea that I'd watch which floor she went to, then seek her out and take her for my wife the next day. The possibility exists that I may still have been drunk from the night before. Yeah. The automatic lights flashed on as she came up each staircase, first walking towards me. She was blonde, she had the face of an empress, then away. She had the sort of body it should have been illegal to display in public without a license. The light snapped off behind her. It was like she had a spotlight following her. She reached the top floor and went off to the left, out of sight. And there I was, stuck on my own again, as I'd always been, of course. But it had been nice to feel otherwise for a while, no matter how ridiculous that was. I was half hoping that she might show up in one of the windows on that side of the building, but she didn't. I was ready to give up when the ground floor lights flashed on again. Someone else was coming up the stairs, Man, the and there changed. was something wrong with him. He was wearing a floor-length coat with a hood pulled tightly around his face. He was moving slowly, swaying slightly with each step. It's difficult to describe, but he carried himself like there was more of him underneath the coat than there should have been. He stopped at the first floor landing and stood for a moment staring out into the street. I could feel my heart pounding. Was he looking for someone or was he checking that no one was watching him? The street was deserted. He turned back and resumed his slow shuffling gait up the stairs. He went out of sight. I kept watching, waiting for him to reappear. The next set of lights snapped on, and something the size and approximate shape of a man came up the stairs on all fours. He wasn't what? crawling in the way that a human might, on hands and knees. He was lying flat on his belly. He was using his arms and legs, but he was undulating his body from side to side, moving impossibly fast, practically flying up the stairs. I watched, horrified. I think I would have screamed, and I don't know what would have happened then, but there was part of my mind, the main part, I believe, that refused to accept what was happening. It couldn't grasp it in any real sense. I was dreaming. I was mad. But it was not possible that this hooded figure that walked like, 
but not quite like a man, was worming its way up the stairs faster than I could have taken them at a run. He disappeared up another staircase, the last before the top floor, and when he re-emerged, he was walking upright again with that same strange, shambling movement. He was heading for her room. He was following the girl I'd been watching. It's not my disbelief that bothers me. I assume that's pretty natural in this sort of situation. No, what kept me from going to my phone and calling the police, and the reason I'm beginning to hate myself, is that I didn't want to cause a fuss. I don't know if I really am that timid, but I just thought there must surely be an explanation like that he'd just fallen over drunk and decided that crawling was safer, that what? he'd been expecting rain tonight, anything which would mean that I wouldn't have to face an embarrassing explanation when it turned out it had all been a result of my misunderstanding. So I didn't do anything. I stood there and watched as he knocked on the door I realized then that I couldn't see his hands. They had to have been inside his sleeves. Why? From where I was, I couldn't actually see the door open. All I saw was whatever had crawled up the stairs like suddenly lunging forward, not leading with its hands, like you might go for someone if you were trying to strangle them, but with its whole form. It seemed to me that it lost something of its shape as it did so. Then the scream. It was brief, no more than a few seconds, but that was enough. It was terror and agony in equal measure, the sort of sound that quite simply cannot be made by a living being in the normal course of life. It also sounded quite a lot like the noises the seagulls make every morning. I waited for the lights to come on in the stairwell as people rushed out to see what was happening. They did not. I sat there until dawn, waiting for the thing to reemerge. It never did. I kept a watch on that building all through the next day, waiting for the police to arrive. People came and went all day, none of them in uniform. I've been keeping an eye on the papers since then. As you've probably guessed, there was nothing. Right. The obvious explanation is, of course, that it didn't happen. I dreamt it, or I'm mentally ill, whatever. The thing is, though, I can't bring myself to believe that. I can still remember all too clearly how it felt. Not the fear, but the paralyzing indecision. The agonizing over whether or not to do something. To tell someone that was all too real. I spent a few nights afterwards watching the street outside, always from behind the blinds. I've not seen that man, or whatever it was, since. I don't think he knows I saw, but I'm gonna have to move out anyway. I think I'm at the start of a nervous breakdown. I can still see the way he moved up the stairs. I have to use the lift now. And every time the seagulls give out one of those dreadful screams, so like the one I heard that night, I feel like I'm going to break down crying. And, of course, how do I know it's really seagulls at all? thought that that was easier to crawl on all fours up the stairs like what i don't know i don't drink i don't smoke so i don't know what it's like to be under the influence especially like to the part where to the point where you think that crawling on all fours is a smoother easier way to get around as opposed to using your legs like so <laughs> I don't know, but you know what this, what I take away from this creepy pasta is like, 
a lot of times when people see suspicious activity or crime like occur in front of them or they hear something like everyone has this I don't want to speak up I don't want to be spotlighted so I didn't want to intervene I didn't want to put myself in the situation so whatever happens happens whatever just as long as it happens to this person or those people and it doesn't happen to me or anyone that I know or love I'm cool and it's kind of a messed up way to think I mean I get it I get it like especially like for people like, and I'm not trying to stereotype, but I, I know where I, about where I come from, right? I come from the hood. People in the hood are like, Shh, somebody get robbed, somebody get shot. Shh. The streets don't say nothing. The hood don't say nothing. You let the police handle the investigation. And even if you saw something, if you speak up, you're seen as a snitch or you're seen as, you know, you're looked at in a negative light, which can be, which could prove dangerous because you live in the hood around these, around these people, around these thugs, these gangsters, these gang members, all that shit. Fucking drug dealers and all that. So like, that's kind of what I took away from it. Like he could have yelled out. He could have did something. Maybe it would have changed the outcome of what happened to the girl or whatever. But I don't know, bro. That's what I took away from it. It was a really good story. Um. Again, I it said, you know, apartment window. So I live in an apartment. So thinking it like the hell thinking of it, I'm like, like. I don't know what I would do if I were to see something like that. But since I want to be a cop, like since I'm going to be a cop, like in the future, I'm pretty sure I would definitely at least call the police if I saw something like that occur. But it's like, if it was outside on the street, because it's the parking lot in the street that people drive past and you know, the lot for us to park in, like right outside my window. So it's not like in this story where there's like another apartment building like across the way from me. You know, I can only see like the street and the neighborhood that's on the other side of the fence. So yeah, man, I don't know. Like, but that's what I took away from it. Like people see bad stuff happen to other folks and they don't want to get involved because they don't want something bad possibly happening to them or they don't want to be looked at differently from the people in the neighborhood. But people, that, you know, it'd be like, what if that was your family member or your friend or your girlfriend, your husband, whatever, whatever the situation is like, they'd be like, you will want someone to step in. And then, you know, people are cocky. People be like, oh, sh that, don't, that would never be my loved one or whoever, like, you never know, like, this life that we live, it like fate comes in to our lives and it just smacks the shit out of it and it makes it do a whole 180. When everything's going so good, a whole 180 and now things are shitty. Like you never know, never say never to anything in your life. That's, that's the biggest um, piece of advice I got from y'all. But like I said, I, I, that's what I took away from this creepy pasta. What did y'all take away from it? Did you enjoy the story? Did you like, how did you feel about it? How did it make you like look at life? Did y'all understand like, you know, could you learn something from it at the end of the day? Cause like I said, I, I told y'all what I, I took away from it. So yeah, that's it. Love the story. Definitely got to look at more Lighthouse Horror. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one, y'all. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you drop a like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, tap the bell icon. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay humble, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. That sound good right there. That, that sound good right there.
right. That, that, that sound good right there.